White Sox Podcast. We're in our West Loop Studios here in Studio A. My name is Herb Lawrence. You can follow me on Twitter at Ecknerwall23. That would be X, Herb. You can, follow, you can They can follow you on X. When I say X, and then you know, the kids get confused. They're like, you're on X, Herb? It's like, no, I'm <laughs> you, not. Don't you mean that the I, adults get confused? It's like, get confused? It's like <laughs> I've never been on X. Don't be spreading those rumors. You can follow Vinny Duber, who is our CHGO White Sox beat reporter at Vinny Duber on X. And our, we are produced by Sarah Fichter. Hello. Are you on X? Uh, unfortunately, I am. Okay. You don't have to say your thing. <laughs> I don't to. use it, though. Like, I rarely use it. I use it, honestly, just for information. I mean. I think I have, like, 100 followers. I do not care you're about better than our, Twitter, X. Our in-season producer, Stephen Nicholas, who has no X. Not on Twitter Excellent. at all. I'm an Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok kind of person. Wow. And you can, you can find Sarah all over the social media. Oh my God, she's <laughs> everywhere. It's the Snapchat you said? Yeah, I still use Facebook too. I use Oof. Facebook for all my high school MySpace? friends. My uh, I was not, Facebook was my very first social media that I downloaded when I was like 12. Okay. So yeah. And you can follow the show at CHGO underscore White Sox. We are in the missing Sean formation. Follow him on Sean underscore W underscore Anderson. He is off to Las Vegas to go and see a great group, U2. I know some of you guys, and U2 is kind of a polarizing group. I love U2. I've seen them in the concert twice, 96 and 98, once in Soldier Field, the other time in the United Center. They're always great, and Sean has seen them multiple times. But this is the icebreaker question. I was asking you, Vinny, before the show, since Sean is going to Vegas to see one of the greatest rock stars of our time and Bono, what would you rather be, Bono, and I know you know, just I'm just putting in generic rock star, but a rock star like Bono or a baseball player like Luis Robert Jr. Bono, Luis Robert Jr. and why? Well, for me, I think it, it would at this point in my life, it would probably be the rock star uh, standpoint. It means I could play an instrument, which would be great. It yes. would mean that uh, that isn't the tuba, of course. Um, <laughs> it would mean that, uh, you know, I would have made a lot of good music throughout uh, my my time. It would be uh, very cool to see that. And also, too, you know, like, I feel like I've seen through my current job, like, what the inside of the sports industry looks like. Mm-hmm. I don't have as much knowledge of the uh, inside of the music industry, so it'd be kind of fun to uh, experience something different. So I don't know if I would want to be Bono, per se. Which one would you want to be? Which rock star? Just yeah. of any rock star? Which any, one would I want to be? It doesn't even have to be alive anymore. Wow! Yeah, I could, could pick be, a dead rock star. I mean, I don't know. I think I think yeah, Paul McCartney's got to have it pretty good, right? I mean, yeah, he was a star when he was in his teens, and now he's what eighty plus, still rocking, still in, going, still going, yeah. still yeah, brother. I mean, he's the most famous musician ever, probably, right? <laughs> Him or Elvis, <laughs> Michael Jackson, but yes, yeah. I mean, the Beatles are the biggest band of all time, right. probably. That's, so yeah. yes. I mean, I'm trying to think of my answer there. Luis Robert is really good, but... He's it, far younger. He's got far more time to live. If you would rather be Paul McCartney or Luis Robert Jr. or even Bono or <laughs> Luis Robert Jr., you'd have to go with Luis Robert Jr. because he has far more time ahead of him. But <laughs> I think the older rock stars still get to do what they did as younger people, too. Like, yes. once Luis Robert's career <laughs> is over at 40, let's say 40, he's pretty much not doing the same things anymore. His baseball career is over he can probably still travel the world but think about this he uh if you're either paul mccartney bono etc he's in vegas right now 50 60 year old bono he's partying having a good time kicking it with his guy the edge i don't know if he kicks it with adam clayton or larry mullen no. you're too tough but he's like hey Edge, how you doing i'm doing good I feel numb. Um, but, oh, my guy Jacob Ramey said he'll be James Hetfield from Metallica. Yeah, it's a pretty good life. I think I would be a rock star or any type of musical star because you get to travel the world. Yep. As an MLB player, you get to travel two countries. 
United States and go to Canada real quick. Great life. Awesome life. Three days in some city. You get to probably go out to some club, talk to the, the woman or guy of your choice, and then go and play baseball and have everybody have adulation. The only problem with being a rock star, I would get sick of my songs. That would be the only thing. Like, no matter how great Streets of With No Names is, if I've sang it for a thousand times, it would be, God damn, I hate this song so much. And I'll be looking forward to playing. Like, when Chung goes to Vegas this week, he's not looking for, oh, this is off my new album, Garbage Time. I don't know. And he Garbage plays time. that, that okay. song. Like, no one wants to hear that, Bono. Play Streets With No Names. Play with play Joshua Tree. Play Octune Baby. Play very little stuff, like maybe Lemon. Lemon! Off of that album. Otherwise, I would get sick of my own songs. That like those three hours of the show would be like, ah, oh, God, this sucks. But after the show, great parties, get to go out in Vegas, all that good stuff. So I would probably be a rock star. I would probably be Q Tip from a tribe called Quest, because he's had a great life producing, rapping. And he still gets to travel the world. So that is my answer to that. What about you guys? Oh, sorry, Stephen. Yes, they play in Mexico and also in London for those. From time to time. From time to time. <laughs> Select teams. Like the White Sox will never play in London. Let's say that. They get to play in Iowa. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing. One day there's going to be a very famous British baseball player. And that team will go to play the London series all the time. Yes, uh, we're waiting for that. We're not, <laughs> not holding our breath on who's going to be the British uh, star. We got German stars all over the field, and we got a French-Canadian, yeah. Edouard Julien, and we got, uh, who's the, the guy on the Twins from Germany? Max Kepler. Yeah, Max yeah. Kepler. We've had a couple of those guys here, but, yeah, none for uh, England yet because they like cricket a little bit more than baseball. Just Cricket's awesome. Just <laughs> circle the bat up, and, uh, yeah, you went to cricket in uh, cricket. Australia. Yeah. Yeah, we need some more Australian players, too. They're mostly all pitchers, yeah. except for, like, D Dave Nielsen. Is the only one I can think of that was an actual hitter that yeah, made it to the major there leagues. Might have been a, I think there was an outfielder, but I don't remember his name. Yeah, so I don't know if if a major league baseball player has the fun that rock stars have, but good luck to Sean enjoying the Spear. Viva and, Sean Vegas. And you two playing at the Spear this weekend. I wish, I'm so jealous of him because, like I said, I've seen two U2 concerts. For my money, for, as a guy who doesn't go to concerts that much, that is the best rock show I've ever been to. I probably would pick the Soldier Field uh, version where they're doing the Pop Mart tour over the United Center in 98, which was a little bit more subdued. But they were in their 50s at that time, and Bono was running around that whole stage all night long. I was like, the energy these people have. And I just saw um, Rolling Stones just released a new album, and I saw them last night with Ronnie Wood on uh, Jimmy Kimmel. Or is it Jimmy Kimmel? Fallon. Jimmy Fallon. And they're promoting the album. I was like, man, that guy's in his 80s. Yeah. He still looks like he can do things. He's not Keith Richards, who was, I think, going to be on tonight. You know, a little bit more weathered, a little bit more drugged. Um, but we'll live to 125 but, years old. Exactly. <laughs> like, And they're still popping. I'm 44, and I feel, oh, God. If I had to do Jimmy Fallon, I'm like, nah, I'm good, guy. They're I'm, all I'm so tired. skinny. That's why. Yeah. Well, they all weigh like 110 pounds. And they're not eating food and eating. <laughs> Consuming other things will keep you skinny. So, yeah, I think a rock star, 100%. Sarah, do you have a an idea of which one you would rather be, a rock star or a Major League Baseball player? A rock star. Anybody in particular? <laughs> Sarah's looking at you like that's the dumbest question she's <laughs> ever been that's asked. That's a very easy one to answer. How about, who would you be? Um, God, I don't really know rock star-wise. I've always, I've always admired what they do. I think, I mean, it's just like being an athlete is when you do those tours and you do those shows, yeah. like especially two hour shows with Taylor Swift is doing a three hour show. I mean, that's insane. And so rock, rock star, Sarah, rock star. Rock star. Oh, hey, she's a rock star. That's, that's debatable. Pop music. Rock star. We're <laughs> looking for rock star. I don't know. Like Motley Crue is pretty fun. I like I mean, them a lot. Sarah, Sarah wants to be Tommy Lee. Yeah. I saw, oh my God. I, I used to be obsessed with Motley Crue and I saw them at Wrigley. I think it was last summer or maybe it was two summers ago. I don't remember, but yeah. they're amazing and they're awesome. The question is, do you want to be Vince Neil or Tommy Lee? God. <laughs> um, I don't know. I would want to be Neither. like one of those undercover rock stars. Like you're in the band, but no one knows who you are. Like that rock star. So you can just walk around the street. It's like the drummer. Live, 
Or no, he married... Well, Tommy Lee is the drummer. Is Tommy that, Lee's oh, that is, yeah. Okay, yeah. Tommy, yeah. I mean, I guess, I, I, I don't know. I Tommy mean, Lee. like, you guys both went to fish, what, last week? Yeah. yeah. Which I was surprised that you went. I told you, you're like 23 and if you, you like If you knew my dad, already. though, you'd be like, oh, yeah. Like, she's going. Like, I only know the main guy, Trey. Yeah. Like, you would want to be the flute guy. I don't know. Do they have a flute guy? Their pianist is amazing. Yeah. I'd want to be him. That he guy. was cool. Yeah. Would you want to be Trey Anastasio or Luis Robert <laughs> Jr.? Trey. <laughs> Dude, you, if I had he to can choose. play the guitar. Luis Robert Jr. can't play the guitar. How do you know? I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, and Luis, I the game was all right. I think his TikToks would be a lot different here, if he could play the guitar. And I don't want to play can on you? the socks either. <laughs> Not this season, at least. Hey, ever. Wow. F- hey, wow, Sarah. Sarah's only done a couple shows this offseason. Already understands Just the socks crushing the are socks. terrible. <laughs> We're going to not talk about the so- I mean, the, the rock. We would love to talk about rock stars all day long because it would be much better uh, than talking about the White Sox. Uh, you could be King Griffey Jr., which is basically treated like a rock star. Best of both worlds. Jacob Ramey says, I don't know. Like, King Griffey Jr. can walk down the street, especially now, and some of the people don't recognize who King Griffey Jr. is because he's not in his profession anymore. Rock stars are forever. Bono walks down the street, people are like, that's Bono. 30,000 people just saw him last night. Exactly. Like, <laughs> King Griffey Jr., like, he's in that new commercial, but if he walks down Chicago, is people going to accost him? Dudes like me are? He doesn't have a lot of lines in these commercials that he's in, No, by it's the his way. wife with the most, with the most lines. I it's, laugh. The, the one where he... The where umpire he, where, one? The, what, no, the one with... Uh, well, the umpire one's good where she gets mad at the umpire, but the, the other one with uh, where the people live in the house and the vendors are all walking around yeah, and they're trying to sell them cotton candy while they're having dinner, yeah. and then Ken Griffey Jr. pops in the window and he's like, I'll have some cotton candy. That's <laughs> funny, but like he has like, he has like three words. That's, that's what you need. He's, <laughs> that's perfect. That should be Kevin Hart's thing. Like When Kevin Hart does a movie, three words. His best performance was old school, where he just was a quick cameo and out. Otherwise, when he's carrying the, mil- the film, oof, it's real tough. you got to be self-aware. And I'm sure King Griffey Jr. is self-aware. He's not a great actor, but he's a great actor in short bits. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, Kisera is firing some stories, uh, some strays. But this show will be dedicated to the second base position, namely Elvis Andres and how his 2023 has gone. And if there's a chance for him to come back, if not, who will be replacing Elvis Andres at second base? We will do all of that after I read this break, and then Vinny will do a, re- a read after that. But one of my favorite places, Sunnyside. It's your home for judgment-free cannabis shopping, a place where all kinds of visitors are welcome to explore, discover, and purchase a wide array of high-quality products. Sunnyside has everything you need to elevate your football season. No matter where you are in your cannabis journey, easy online ordering and in-store pickup Great transparency loyalty program called Sunnyside Rewards. It's Illinois' favorite dispensary. My favorite, but of course, it's at the Wrigley Field one. Otherwise, I've gone to the River North one. I haven't explored outside of those because those are in my local area, but you can find your favorite ones. Elmwood Park out there by Lawrence Benedetto. Go up to South Beloit, Wisconsin, or Illinois, get you some Sunnyside stuff. Their house of, uh, house of brands is Mindy's, Cresco, High Supply, Floracal, Wonder, and Remedy. My favorite, though is good news. Go and get you some Fryers. I'm telling you. If you like sativa, Fryer. Go and get you some. Right now, through October 31st, head to sunnyside.shop and use code CHGO25 at checkout for 25% off your order. One use per customer, not stackable with any other promotions. That's not only for new customers. Anyone can use our code. Pick up everything you need to elevate your football season. Must be 21 plus or Illinois med card holder. Vinny? Herb last weekend mm-hmm. went out to, went out to see my dad. Yeah. Went out to hang out with my dad and watch uh, watch the Bear game. Okay. Out out there in the in the suburbs, and I think my dad knew I was coming. Well, he did obviously, but but he prepared. You could tell because you go out to the garage and what's in the fridge in the garage, but some Goose Island three one two. Of course, of course. You open the fridge and that honk noise happened. You go, oh, it's a honking good time in here. Uh, you know, Chicago's beer. That's what Goose Island is, and they are sh- supporting us here at CHGO is the Goose Island Beer Company. They've been kicking since 1988. And, you know, I love the 312. Herb, obviously, currently is loving uh, one of the beer hugs. There's a whole bunch of them you can check tropical out. tropical beer hug at 9.9. They got, out here. They got the full pocket pills. They got the Oktoberfest because it's the fall time right now. Uh, so you really can't go wrong with any of the Goose Island business. Uh, you know, we got some events 
coming up with them, obviously. The tailgate for this weekend's Bear game, the Bear game uh, against the Las Vegas Raiders. Head out to the CHGO tailgate and, oh my God, so much Goose Island. All the Goose Island you can drink. Sarah will be there, right, Sarah? Absolutely. I'll be there at 6.30 to help set up, but people will show up probably around 8, 8.30. A.M.? Yeah. How about that? Bright and early. Oh. I'll be drinking one of the beer hugs at 7 a.m. There you go. <laughs> what? Hey, it's, it's, it's 7 a.m. somewhere, as they say. Uh, but, hey, you can go uh, grab as much beer uh, via Goose Island's Clybourne Avenue tap room as you'd like. They've also got the uh, tap room over in West Town on Fulton Street. We love Goose Island here at three at uh, CHGO. We love Goose Island out in the burbs in the dad's beer fridge. Uh, it's a honking good time, so go get you some. Yeah, Herman, I, I actually said the wrong thing. I said old school. I meant 40-year-old virgin where he's arguing with the other guy at the uh, store. That is the perfect amount of Kevin Hart. Anything f- more than that? Oh, my God, it's real rough. It is so rough. But, yeah, he's a ensemble cast member, not a I'm driving the movie and for me, like him and Will Ferrell together in that movie, I was like, that's way too much. Because those are two type of guys that I'm like, they're, they're ensemble characters, not driving a movie. It also wasn't a very good movie. Yeah, that's, yeah. The, that's the other part. <laughs> what, what was it called again? You guys again? didn't like that what movie? It was a, like a The one where Will Ferrell goes to jail. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. thought you were talking about the 40-year-old virgin. I was no, like, that's that hilarious. Movie. That's a classic yeah, movie. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a very classic movie. Let's talk about a person that... In short spurts in 2022. Oh, what a, what a segue by Herb. Was really good. But when you got extended ve- version of Elvis Andres, you're like, mm, that's really terrible. Um, Elvis Andres was signed late in the, late in the season, in the offseason this year by the White Sox to play second base. I thought it was going to be a disaster from the beginning. After, after reviewing it and sitting back, it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, especially on the defensive side of the thing. So, Vinny, Elvis Andres this year, what were your thoughts of, firstly, in the offseason when the White Sox did sign him and you got to speak to him, and then what happened this year? What do you think uh, he eventually fi- figured out and how his grade was? Well, the positive things I can say about Elvis Andres, be it in 22, be it in 23, probably applies to his entire career before he be- came to the south side, is – what a great presence he is. He's a very he's a he's a great veteran guy to have around. He's got the right attitude. If an, and if it rubs off on the young guys, then that's a good thing. You want your guys to be emulating Elvis Andrus' personality and his approach to play in the game. Um, and then we get to the production. Yeah. Uh, listen, in the offseason, it was a fine thing to do because the White Sox were went into spring training with Romy Gonzalez as their everyday second baseman. They were willing to give him that chance. They decided not to give him that chance because Elvis Andrews was still available. What Elvis Andrews did in a couple of months with the White Sox in 2022 was some of the best offensive work he's done in his entire career. Mm-hmm. And But like you just mentioned, that was a small sample size, and it was kind of back to normal a little bit in 2023. Sarah, if you want to bring up Elvis Andrews throughout his career, an illustrious 15-year career in the major leagues. The other one that Vinny just sent you. The uh, offense production has not been very good very often. Those are the OPS pluses every year of his career, and only, what, one, two, three times have they been over league average. Mm. I, I... I would not have expected that. You would not have expected that. At all. We were talking we were talking with Sean recently because Sean as you know hates when people are named to the All-Star team. <laughs> we were talking about All-Stars who maybe didn't have the best seasons. That right there is a 2010 All-Star Elvis Andrews with an OPS plus of 72 Oof. by season's end. Uh not great, but as you'll notice, the number that he put up in 2022 the third highest OPS plus of his career, which would indi- which would convince a team like the White Sox that, hey, maybe he's got something here, particularly because if you look what he did specifically with the White Sox, it's better that he'd been in a single season in his entire major league career. So they had reason to believe that after seeing what they saw, that that could be, if not replicated, come close to being some of the production, plus you get that positive presence, plus you get a guy who can spell Tim Anderson when he gets hurt, plus you get a guy who plays some reliable defense. Uh, But the bat was not there at all this year, as you saw right there. The OPS Plus was 81. He was part of the reason, and granted, there were many parts, but part of the reason that this lineup was as ugly from a production standpoint as it was all year long. Uh, The White Sox did not do very much with the bats, 
and part part of that is because Elvis Andrews did not do very much with the bat. So I don't know if you want to call it not living up to expectations, as I just showed you. For the majority of his career, that's the kind of hitter that he's been from a production standpoint, but certainly the White Sox would have liked more, but as we are finding to be a theme, they would have liked more from just about every position on the field. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like When you showed me those numbers, wow. I could not believe how poor... Elvis Andres was def- offensively. He probably carried all of this offense, uh, defensive production throughout his Texas years, and uh, he must be sick right now that the Texas Rangers are doing so well without him two years since he has left them. But, yeah, um, at the time I was like, this is probably not a good idea for the White Sox to sign a 36-year-old Elvis Andres to switch positions. And I know offseason most White Sox fans that we spoke to here on CHGO White Sox Wanted him to come back as the, for the reasons that you stated, Vinny, because the 116 OPS plus, he was one of our best hitters. I think he hit nine home runs in his short brief time here with the White Sox in 2022. And I thought that was going to be it. I was like, oh, man, that's a nice way to just introduce yourself to the White Sox and you'll be going off to some other team. But he didn't see the market that he thought he was going to get as other teams were like, you know what? We don't want an aging uh, Elvis Andres on our team to play shortstop for us. The White Sox had a need at second base, and I think they exhausted all their avenues for looking for another second baseman. As you said, Romy Gonzalez was an option where people are saying, hey, you can't trade this guy because he's looking so good in the Miami uh, batting cages down there in the offseason. But as we found out, the White Sox weren't too confident in Romy Gonzalez playing 140-plus games at second base and depending on that. And that's good that they didn't do that because Romy got hurt early in the year and his production wasn't there. But Elvis kind of held his own at, D- at second base, just kind of like uh, what uh, Andrew Vaughn was, where he's going to get to every ball that is in his area. And when he does get it, he's going to pretty much put it away, get the out, and he's going to do the job. As a second baseman, I thought he was going to be a disaster. If you look up the metrics, he was a zero. He was as, fine. Far, as far as <laughs> outs above, I mean, as far as a uh, as a outs above uh, average, he was a zero, like which is league average. Um, hitting wise, if Sarah, if you want to flash what his stats were this year, two fifty one, three oh four on base percentage, and a three fifty eight slugging percentage. And as you said, it's an eight eighty one weighted runs created plus slash. OPS plus he wasn't that good with the bat but as you said this is typical Elvis Andres numbers which he actually had to get up to those numbers as a hot last two months where he was just driving the team to this uh to a couple of victories and he was probably their hottest hitter in the second half but overall the Elvis Andres experience was good not great I wish they could have him as an advisor coach in the future I think he will be a great manager when he does decide to hang it up because as you said it seems like especially last year took over like he would be uh, you know establishing the infield meetings telling people where to play coming in to give the pitcher a, a break real quick last year when you had the opportunity to do that without the pitch clock you'd say hey man just take your time get a breath I got you here. I'm just acting like I'm grabbing the rosin. You're good, brother. Like, that's a veteran move. That's the type of player that you need. Now, with Elvis Andres not here, I need to have the White Sox have that presence kind of in the locker room still. That is the only problem. Like, I hope he left enough nuggets and enough gems for people who are still currently in that locker room to say, hey, Elvis left me with enough knowledge and enough baseball stuff where I can carry on his message to the next guy. Because while he's a great guy, while he's a great leader, I do do not need him on the White Sox anymore because it just seems like a, such a White Sox move to sign a person that's on the other side of their prime to get something that they used to have. And that's why we keep on talking about guys like Salvador Perez with Merrifield, and we'll get back to him in a second, because they're Royals firstly and because they've had success in the past and the White Sox are trying to regain that. We already talked about Ken Griffey Jr. He was a late White Sox. Manny Ramirez, late White Sox. John Cruck, late White Sox. Jose Canseco. And the list goes on and on. I mean, you've got pitchers, Steve Carlton, uh, Tommy Seaver, all on the other side. And their last. James Shields. James. <laughs> uh, Wago G, right? Yeah. Yeah. All on their last legs, pretty much ended their career with the White Sox and they were done. So I want a player that is in his prime or coming close to that but the White Sox don't develop talent that well and they don't sign free agents in their prime so we're stuck with people like Elvis Andres so for overall 
What would you say Elvis Andres grade you'll give him an offense, Vinny? I mean, it had to be a D minus. I mean, it was he he didn't contribute really at all offensively. I mean, I he had a uh, he had a hot last couple of months. That's true, but I mean, we're talking about a guy who had. OPS plus numbers down down where the worst of the team was right down where Yasmani Grandal mm-hmm. was down where um, TA was exactly like these are not these are not good numbers they're not pretty at all um, and you know yeah there was that silver lining oh hey look what he did for a month and a half or something like that but at, it was it, it the reason that the White Sox were so bad offensively this year is because that nobody was hitting besides one guy yep. and. That's eight spots in the lineup, and Elvis Andrews occupied one of those spots. I mean, it's it's just as much his fault as it is, you know, uh, uh, Yes's fault or Ta's fault or Moncada's fault or, or anybody else's. It's he's 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 got a uh, a bunch of this to shoulder as well. And so, yeah, I don't. I, again, it wasn't the worst. It wasn't the absolute worst. <laughs> that I think we're probably saving that for for shortstop. What's that next week? But That's uh, next Monday, uh, uh, you're not even going to be here. No, I won't. But That's good. There you go. You I get want a sneak peek see, of what I would have said. But uh, I would have I would have went with Andrew Vaughn or Andrew Benintendi when Sean was gone. But we're going in sequential <laughs> order of the bases, so just so I can piss up Sean. But Sean's going to have a whole week to just talk about Andrew Benintendi next week. And luckily, you're gone for that. You know, what a shame. I'll be drunk because I got a drink. <laughs> Every time he brings up Andrew Benintendi unwarranted. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But, yeah, it was it was not good. I would have said offensively D+. Plus. I thought defensively it was fine. And it, you're absolutely right in bringing up the point of, you know, the position switch. And, and I, I brought it up constantly in the offseason. Like, hey, this guy's never played second base before. What makes you think that he's going to be able to succeed at this? But he went out and was fine. He made the plays he needed to make. He wasn't perfect, but... So, you know, I think he was pretty average. You read off just net zero, basically, uh, uh, when you're looking at those, some of those numbers. So throw it up there as a C for, for defense, I guess. But, yeah, there's no reason that Elvis Andrews uh, deserved any sort of, from a production standpoint, deserved any sort of uh, high marks this season. And here's our uh, report card on Elvis Andrews. Offensively, yeah, it was D. Like, he's, we could have went lower, but we got to save some of these Fs for other people because people did much worse than Elvis Andrews. Defense, like you said, it's just... The average C and overall a D plus for Elvis Andres 2023 year. Now I said already established that I wouldn't want Elvis Andres back on the team. And I know you're not a fan of the team necessarily. You are a reporter, you're a journalist. So what are your thoughts on Elvis Andres coming back to the White Sox for a third year or two and a half years in 2024 to man second base, maybe shortstop if they run from Timmy. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it really makes much sense. I mean, it's a guy that maybe if you're looking around at the end of the offseason and this is an item that you couldn't check off your to-do list and you're like, well, it's this or Lenin Sosa, I mean, maybe then that's <laughs> what you do. But I don't think any of either of those are a very uh, uh, appealing option for this White Sox team. If they're trying to win next year, they need to be a lot better at second base in, in, from a production standpoint. How many years in a row have we been saying that, obviously? But um, – that is an area where there is a definite opening, right? Shortstop is still a mystery because do the White Sox want to create another item on that list? Do they want to move on from Tim Anderson? We don't know. You know, who knows who's going to be healthy and stuff like that. That's a definite spot where you can go upgrade. No questions asked about it right there, right? Right field, we saw what Oscar Colas did this year. Right field's a spot where you can go upgrade. You don't have to worry about it. There's no there's no future uh, that, that needs to be uh, cleared for anybody right here. Yeah, I think uh, I, I don't think Elvis Andrews coming back, given what that production is and what you've seen that the production has been throughout most of his career, I don't really think it makes a lot of sense to bring him back. That said, I, I can't say enough good things about what he did in the clubhouse. If they think that that is valuable enough to eat the uh, uh, another spot in the lineup, giving you not much this year, then fine. But uh, if they're trying to win, they need to upgrade at a lot of spots. And while... A lot of that will have to come from the guys who are already there. Mm-hmm. Second base is not necessarily one of those one of those places on the field. It's a weird thing, and uh, I think it was a William asking William Mosley asking, didn't he win a Gold Glove in the past? He has not. He's never won a Gold Glove, which is surprising. I thought Elvis Andres' career was much better than I imagined it to be. Actual awards that he's won or notifications that he's won. He was the second place in the Rookie of the Year in two thousand nine. As you said, 2010, he was an all-star. In 2012, he was an all-star. That's it. That's Elvis Andres' career. You know, you see the good play with... Uh, 2,000 hits. Yeah. Longevity. Yeah. <laughs> good, yeah. And those Texas Rangers teams, he's only hit 
20 home runs one time in his career in 2017. He's had a good career. I thought he was more like, not even like Hall of, I hate the term, Hall of very good, but just Hall of decent, you know, good player, good, decent, long career, especially with Texas. I think at the end of his career, when he's finally done, they will maybe retire his number or put him on the ring of honor at Texas because his him and Adrian, Adrian Beltre's nice uh, chemistry they had, the frivolity they had there. But went to back to back World Series too. He did. Yeah. Uh, never won one. That's just sad. Um, but yeah, his career is good, and I hope when he does hang him up, he will be somebody's bench coach because, as you said, Vinny, he just seems like a consummate pro, getting these players ready to play and getting uh, getting the good advice out there. And if, I wouldn't be too mad if he was eventually a White Sox manager years down the line because I think the guy's got good style, good. Good intentions, and I like his hairstyle. I would need to get him some uh, <laughs> some questions about how he gets his shit so s- smooth and shit. But we we need to remember too that he wasn't the only guy who played second base this year. Oh and yeah, there was a a, a host players. of youngsters who uh, failed to really impress in any regard. We mentioned Romy Gonzalez up at the top, brought up Lenin Sosa, who probably uh, a lot of people not probably a lot of people were clamoring for that guy to I get was. all the playing time in yep. the world, and he was awful. He was really awful. 201, 224, 348, six home runs in the year. He's 23. It was him, Zach Remillard. Remillard was the other one who, again, hot start. And and I think he won over a bunch of White Sox fans who were looking for fundamental play, right? Yeah. And, and, and I I, and I made my voice change there. But, again, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. They, they need to be better in that regard, certainly. But, the, you know, they brought up the... To, to use Jerry Reinsdorf's uh, words, the David Eckstein type player in Zach Remillard. And uh, I don't want to say that the act wore thin real quick because he that's his way that he plays the game, and that's good, and that's you should compliment him on that. But, boy, did it not result in much production. And uh, after a while, uh, you know, a guy who had uh, a notable couple of few games there at the start of his big league career uh, really became kind of nothing at the plate. Jose Rodriguez. Popeye never got a plate appearance this year. Not one. He scored a run, though. He's not Moonlight Graham, quite Moonlight Graham, but he's close to it. I would be, man, I'll be sick if that was the end of his, not end of, he's 22 right now, but man, just to get that close to, the, to your dream and see it go away. Hopefully, Jose Rodriguez will be a doctor in Minnesota eventually, <laughs> but man. Well, as, look- as we talked at the time, he wasn't there because he. Earned, earned a call up, so to speak. You know what I mean? He was there because Lenin was hurt at the time. He right? was there because there was injuries, and he was the next guy. He was on the forty man roster, and it was basically just we need a guy to come be here in case somebody else gets hurt. And it was while Anderson was on the uh, IL, I'm pretty sure. And uh, it was very much just like, just could we could you come up here and be a body for three days? He was, yeah. and he played one game, scored one run. That's it. That's the end of his uh, line. After the break, we since we don't want Elvis Andres and these guys are not ready to take over in Lenny Sosa, Zach Remillard, or Romy Gonzalez, they're not ready to take over. Who are the options? Who are the free agent options available for the White Sox out there? Spoiler alert, it's not good. But after this break, I will tell you who these people are. All right. DraftKings, the NFL season is going strong, and DraftKings Sportsbook is hooking up new customers with an offer that's even stronger. Bet 5 bucks on any game this week to score $200 and instantly in bonus bets. And DraftKings isn't stopping there. All customers can take advantage of their sweetener offer every game this October. Tonight's game is the Saints hosting my cousin Trevor Lawrence's Jaguars. And you can opt in and get 50% profit boost on any bet. Get in on the game day and greatness. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code CHGO. New customers can score $200 instantly in bonus bets when you bet $5 on the NFL. That's code CHGO only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope ny at four six seven three six nine four six seven three six nine nine. It's not seven numbers. In I Connecticut, think it was <laughs> yeah. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. 
Please play responsibly on behalf, uh, behalf of Boot Hill Casino Resort, licensee partner Golden Nugget Lake Charles. 21 plus age varies by distri- uh, jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets inspire 168 hours after issuance. That's very specific. See sportsbook.com. Sportsbook.draftkings.com slash football terms for eligibility and deposit restrictions. Terms and responsible gaming resources. Herbie Two-Tone over here. Yes. It's exactly seven days, 168 hours. Mm, see, look at those people. Um, and we have a DraftKings King of the Week. Arvid Soderbloom. Arvid. God, he was good the other night. Oh, he was so Arvid that other day. <laughs> I enjoyed all that hockey game. I wasn't looking. There it is. You're a hockey guy now, Herb. Uh, Herbie I only, Hockey. I only watch it for those overs, man. This Connor Bedard guy. I don't know if you guys have heard of him. This Connor Bedard over shots on goal, especially if it's at two and a half, mercy, easy free money. For, well, sorry, I can't be giving you too much gambling advice, but Connor Bedard's good. He shoots the buck at the goal a lot. So do what you will with that. Um, let's see. We need to go to, uh, let's see, uh, Arvid Soderboom. He played one game. He had one goal against, or one goal against 30, what was that, 36 saves? 36, uh, 36 save attempts. Shots shot against. against. Okay, shots at, 35 yeah. saves with a 792 right. save percentage. He's the king of the game. And I think, was that, uh, he's from, like, Finland, Sweden? Yeah, it sounds like that. I, we could look it and up, And I think I they suppose, actually have yeah. a king, in, a kingdom of Sweden. <laughs> so he they could, do. He theoretically could be. The king of Sweden. The king of Sweden. <laughs> Arvid Söderblom. I don't even know if he's from Sweden Let's or Norway or Denmark. But I know he's probably from one of those countries. He's Scandinavian. Sarah. Sarah. We're back. Sarah was having some technical issues there. For I have a while. no idea what happened. I was like, "Why is the camera not on?" <laughs> oh, I didn't see. I didn't even see that. There we go. Perfect. Yes, yeah, see, there we go. Yeah, Arvid I tried to hide it. Um, let's go to CHGO diehard program, and he's from Sweden. Oh yeah, yeah, I was right. He could be the king of Sweden. We have podcasts here on CHGO as you're every watching day. right now, or listening, and live shows every day. Every team, our team, the Cubs, Bulls, Hawks, even the Bears. That lowly Bears team. Post-game shows. We don't have any, but the Bulls will have some. So will the Blackhawks. Premium written content from members at allchgo.com. And 20% off events. As we talked about earlier, this Sunday, we have a tailgate. Bears are playing the Las Vegas Raiders. And Sarah will be out there at 7 a.m., but you got to show up at 9. Yes. So you show up at 9 o'clock. Go to allchgo.com. If you are a diehard, you get 20% off of that. You get 20% off of merchandise. We got some great new shirts out there. Get them. Become a CHGO diehard. And if you're look, looking at the uh, podcast right now, you see this box right in front of Vinny? You get that as when you become a member. Inside of that will be a T-shirt of your choice, a member card, some stickers. And like I said, that 20% off of events and merch. We have dope merch for all the teams. And I said, free shirt for when you become a member. And a member-only Discord, which some of the people who are talking in our uh, chat right now are part of right now. It is really cool. It's called the CHGO Lounge. And when we do our Mailbox Mondays, those are exclusively for our diehard members who are in our CHGO members-only Discord. And for the next two tailgates, I know it says three, but there's only two tailgates scheduled left. X Golf will be giving away a two hundred dollar gift certificate to any of their Chicago lands locations. Find the X Golf nearest you at playxgolf.com slash Chicago Land. And one more read. Let's see what we got. Ray C D J R. Are you in the market for a new vehicle? If you are, then we have some great news for you. Ray Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram in Fox Lake just have joined the CHGO team. At Ray CDJR, you'll always be able to shop one of Chicagoland's largest inventories and find unforgettable savings. And right now, during Ram Power Days at Ray CDJR, only in Fox Lake, you'll be able to secure 0% financing or 17% off new Ram models. But that's not all. No? Now, through October 31st, which is Halloween, explore new renovated showroom and take advantage of the limited time seven-year anniversary savings. So if you're in the market for a new vehicle, then you need to check out the team at Ray, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, because they are in the only team that we recommend. Visit them today at Route 12 in Fox Lake. For more information, visit Ray, CDJR in Fox Lake or RayCDJR.com today. Serving the community since 1963. Now we're going to talk about 
the replacement at second base. Who are the free agent people available for the White Sox to poach next year and have a good year? Who are they, Herb? Whew. They're all old, it would appear. Old and yeah. not good. Um, as you see on the screen, um, Adam Frazier, who I wanted a couple of years ago, and I got pounded by White Sox Twitter, rightly so, saying I would trade for him when he was a Pittsburgh Pirate, and I would trade Andrew Vaughn away. No, it's not looking so bad, but whatever. And Adam Frazier didn't really have a good year with Baltimore this year. He's 32 years old next year. These ages you see in parentheses are the age they're going to be next year. Whit Merrifield, we'll get to him in a second. Brad Miller's 34. Tony Kemp, he's been toiling out there in Oakland for years and so just be like the same thing that we're getting from Elvis Andres, uh, just a former Oakland A that's coming here to take some money, 32 years old next year. Left-handed back Colton Wong, 33. I think he ended his season with the Los Angeles Dodgers after getting traded to the Seattle Mariners last offseason. Donovan Solano is 36 years old. And Michael Chavis is the young guy, but he is 28. None of those people really get you hyped. But Vinny, I was. <laughs> is there anybody in that list that you're like, hmm, maybe? And by the way, Whit Merrifield has a mutual. He's the only one that has a mutual option. It's not necessarily free. All the rest of those guys are unrestricted free agents. Are anybody on this list that you're like, hmm, this guy could work if he comes here and uh, the White Sox could get him? I mean, I don't know if any of those scream, you know, got to go out and sign that guy. That being said, you could see, as I brought up earlier, uh, you know, here we, here we are at spring training and uh, the White Sox are still looking for a second baseman. Maybe one of these guys is still out there. There are some guys on that list who have had some moments of, of uh, – promise in the past mm -hmm. you know uh, I, I I think of Solano playing with the the twins and, and doing some things uh Tony Kemp was the guy who I was like gonna look up and be like oh I wonder what Tony Kemp did last year worse than Elvis Andrews from an OPS plus <laughs> standpoint so um and I was thinking like that he stole a lot of bases that's not true no. yeah so um <laughs> no. what do you yeah, do here Tom I mean Tony Kemp? Whit Whit, <laughs> Whit Merrifield again not really someone that people should necessarily be clamoring for at 35 years old, but is a guy who has, in the past, produced. Um, again, you just listed a whole bunch of examples of players that the White Sox have signed who used to produce and yep. then didn't. Uh, so I could see that certainly going that way again. Um, but they do need a second baseman for next year. Uh, and if they uh, are intent on winning, mm -hmm. I don't think it can be the Zach Remillard, Romy Gonzalez, Lenin Sosa experience, um, which is currently what they have. Um, you know, that just – it didn't seem like it was going to work last year. No. And then they signed Elvis Andrews and it didn't have to. Uh, if that's the way they go into 2024, though, that would be um, not great for, no. for second base. All that being said, though, if you're planning for 2025 – Maybe save yourself some money and don't even bother going out and getting one of those guys because what's the upside, right? I mean, I mean, I guess the upside is they could be good, but good, but, but that hasn't shown lately, right? But there's not, there doesn't seem to be a great chance of that being the case. Uh, that is a that is, but hey, trades are possible too. You know what I mean? And I'm sure that at some point in the coming weeks, we are going to go through the entire league and and try to find some trade partners, be it for that position, for right field, for a for a closer, for some starting pitching, because you know uh, you can't necessarily. Uh, tick every single item off of that list if you're Chris Getz by just showing up to the free agent market. Uh, that That's something that you're going to have to go out and, and, and find some trade partners to do something with. And they probably will. They make a trade of some fashion every year, it seems, or every winter, it seems like, you know, whether it's a big one or not. But um, that list right there, uh, if I was Chris Getz, I wouldn't be like, all right, well, we know we're going to get somebody <laughs> who's going to solve that problem. It doesn't, it doesn't seem that those guys on that list uh, would be a problem solver in that department out of the, all those people. And I know as Jacob says, we're already just disgusted by the Whit Merrifield talk. And we already know probably he's the most likely of the people on that list that come here, but the white Sox need left-handed versatility. And the only player on that list that is left-handed and can hit a little bit, a spidgen with a 94 uh, OPS plus is Adam Frazier who played for the Baltimore Orioles this last year. They did well. He was all right. He had a career high in home runs, which was 13. So if the White Sox would get any type of production like that from Adam Frazier, I think they would take it because they haven't had production at second base for a long time. 
and the lefty bat would uh, ver- diversify that lineup with full filled with right-handed power hitters. Even though he's not a power hitter, I think I would take Adam Frazier off of that list. Like you said, though, I would look more into trades for a, a younger type of positive and guy going up instead of a guy going down uh, type of deal. But with the White Sox having so few big time prospects down in the minor leagues, it's going to be probably tough to get a person that is on this ascent unless a team has like just a plethora of middle infielders that they just want to uh, trade and you have a piece that they want. Like if they're just looking for Garrett Crochet type of person where they think they can get him ready and you have little to no use, then you have use for Garrett Crochet. He has Absolutely. a, he <laughs> has a, a future, but we could see that Garrett Crochet next year is going to be like, are you the bullpen? Is he a starter? Where are we going to use him? Because the White Sox with the the uh, starter dearth might say if he might be a starter eventually, but I think he would have to be built up to that because he hasn't been a starter ever really, except for like one game at Tennessee back in 2020, <laughs> long time ago. So I would say I would rather go on the trade market than get any of those players, but – Whew, it is bad, and I wouldn't blame Chris Getz if he didn't eventually got a second baseman and at the end of the spring training is like one of these guys, Tony Kemp. As long as he went and got some top-line starters other places, you can get away with a second baseman that is not great offensively. So it's not a good look for the White Sox right now, especially at second base. It seems like going to be another year where we're like, in 2024 or 2024 in October, we're going to be towing this show. I'm like, man, that second baseman the White Sox signed and or traded for was terrible. Who are we going to get in 2025? That's going to be the same show because I don't know. Like, maybe they can develop a, sec- a shortstop or find a shortstop that is blocked on another team and just put him at second base, as we saw with Elvis Andres, who was advanced in age. He handled the second base position pretty easily. He did. He did. And, and I think we should bring up what Herman brings up, which is – hey, could Tim Anderson be playing second base for this team next year? It's certainly not off the table. And, I mean, you know, it, it again, it, it probably all depends on everything else that happens, right? I mean, if you don't – if they don't go out and get any other middle infielders, they're not just going to move T.A. to second base just because, <laughs> right? I mean, he would still be the best shortstop you have available. But if they can go out and make a trade or sign a free agent of a shortstop who's even remotely – Interesting. Maybe the idea is you try TA out at second base, but again, it, it would seem to me that their best course of action right now is to keep Tim Anderson at shortstop, as it usually costs you more to go get a shortstop than it does a second baseman. So, um, no, those free agents are not appealing, but um, maybe there is a combination of players, no matter how they're acquired, that ends up with, hey, Tim, how would you feel about playing second base for a little bit? As, you know, if they, if they, fall fall into a very good defender or shortstop or something like that. But right now I think uh, T.A. is probably most likely to come back as the shortstop uh, if, he, if he, in fact, does come back. And uh, they will be looking for a new second baseman for the, what, I know in the fourth world, year in a row. I know in the World Baseball Classic he did play second base because very briefly, there was but, other people yeah. there, and so he was willing to do it. Do you think he'll be willing to do it next year for the White Sox to play second base if they were to go out and get a better and put those in quotes, shortstop. Yeah, I think he would be willing to do it. Okay. Be- but but here's the thing. If you're the White Sox, you got to have an overwhelming reason to make that move. Okay, yeah. Right? I yeah. mean, the reason he played second base in the World Baseball Classic is because Trey Turner was playing shortstop. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the White Sox aren't going to go get Trey Turner. Nope. So if they end up, like I said, with somebody who is a proven defensive ace at shortstop, and they're like, Tim, we got this guy who's going to make all the plays at shortstop – could you play second base so we can keep your bat in the lineup and keep your energy going? That, that's sellable. Why isn't, you know what I mean? That makes sense, right? Mm-hmm. But if it's, hey, Tim, you know, we got this guy. He might be okay. He might be a little better than you. He might not be. Like, what's the point of moving Tim? Tim made a, makes a lot of errors. Tim gets to a lot of balls that, that guy, other guys don't get to. You might have a defensive plus in a way in Tim Anderson staying at shortstop, even if you go out and get somebody who's just meh defensively at shortstop. So I think you have to have a very compelling reason to move Tim to second base. They did it for, what, one game during the regular season, and it had to do with his health. You know what I mean? It had to do with what he was able to do on the field, what he was comfortable with uh, You know, from a physical standpoint. By the next day, he was comfortable enough to go back and play shortstop. So I don't think this is a thing where it's like, 
Tim Anderson's killing us at shortstop. We need to move him to second base, you know, hell or high water. You got to go out and get somebody who you know you can guarantee is going to be a big-time upgrade defensively. Agree totally. So that's going to do it for CHGO White Sox podcast for today. Thank you to our producer, Sarah Fichter. Thanks. Thanks, Sarah. You were awesome. Thanks. Um, Trey Anastasio fan, Sarah, who's very young and shouldn't know who those people are, but she does. <laughs> That is Vinny Duber. You can follow him at Vinny Duber on X. Well, at Vinny Duber, comma, on X. (laughs) Good distinction. My name is Herb Lawrence, Ecknerwall Wall 23. And Cody didn't know what the Ecknerwall Wall 23. Ecknerwall Wall 23 is just Lawrence spelled backwards, guys. L-A-W-R-N-C-E. Spell it backwards. Sounds like maybe Cody should have spent a little more time thinking about it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I think a lot of people don't. I had to do that because Lawrence Holmes worked at the score and... It was too much confusion. He's he, a U, though, right? Yeah, he's, yeah. he spells his name wrong. Yeah. Uh, at least his parents do. Um, L-A-W-R-N-C-E is the correct way. At the wall 23 is the way you can follow me on Twitter. In the show, you can follow at CHGO underscore White Sox. Our guy, Sean Anderson, at Sean underscore W underscore Anderson. He's in Las Vegas. So Viva tom- Sean Vegas. So tomorrow, it'll be Vinny and myself tomorrow. Early edition. Not the show, but the CHGO White Sox show, 10.30 a.m. Breakfast. Breakfast with the boys. It'll be Vinny's last show for a while because then that man's going on vacation himself. So, for Vinny, me, and Sarah, we'll see you tomorrow from our homes. Bye. We all city like the mayor. 